Hi guys, Olive here, here today to tell you what I plan on reading in January 2022. At long last, it is finally the new year, and I can't even tell you how excited I am to have this fresh start. I can't wait to get back in the swing of reviewing and do all the different types of videos that I want to do in 2022. I talked about all of those in my goals video in case you're interested. But two things that I am very excited to get back to this year are wrap-ups in TBRs. I took a year off, but now I'm ready to bring them back. So in today's video, let's talk about the books I'll be reading in the first month of 2022. So the first book I know I'll be reading in January is a really popular one from 2020 that I never got around to reading. It is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I've always been intrigued by this one, but I knew I was going to pick it up the moment I heard that Amanda from North Avenue Candles, where I work, she decided she wanted to base the January Candle of the Month on this book. The January Candle of the Month is very fittingly called the library. And when I tell you that this candle smells like the library of your dreams, I truly mean it. I can't get enough of this candle. I've been trying not to burn through the entire thing before I even get a chance to start this book. I'm just in love with it. So when you smell this, you get the rich wood of the shelves. You get the worn pages of well-loved books. You get that vanilla aroma that old books give off. It's so good. I am in love with this candle. It smells like you've stepped into a library within a fantasy novel, which is perfect because that's what the Midnight Library is. So if you want one of these, I'll put the link in the description box below. Be sure to grab one if you want one because they're only available through the end of January. Come February, we'll have a new candle of the month. And just to reiterate, I work for this company. I am in the studio on a regular basis, helping to get these candles in your hands. I'm not being paid extra to show you this candle. I don't get a commission per candle. I just want to show you this because I love my job. I really believe in what we make, and I think you're going to love this one. And if you would also like to read or maybe even reread The Midnight Library, which is a book about a library containing an infinite number of books, and each one of those books contains a different reality, maybe you would like to read this book with me. I am going to be hosting a very informal read along of this book. It's going to start on on Sunday, January 16th, and go until Saturday, January 22nd, so a week. And I'm going to host it over on Goodreads. I'll link the Goodreads page in the description box below, as well as all of the details you'll need to know. It's going to be very low-key, very relaxed, just something fun where we can chat and maybe beat the winter blues. So if you can get your hands on a copy of this book in that amount of time and you're interested in reading it, I hope you'll join me. But now on to all the other books that I want to read this month. I am very excited to get back on track with reading the classics. That was a goal of mine for this year. Made myself a whole list of classic books that I want to get through, and I had better get started on that list. So the first classic that I'll be reading in 2022 is The Reef by Edith Ward. This book is about four people caught up in a love rectangle, and there will be no chance of a happy ending for any of them, because that's just the Edith Wharton way. And I love that about her. It's been way too long since I've been properly depressed by an Edith Wharton novel. Yeah, it's been a calendar year since I read Ethan Frome. That's just far too long. And in January, I will also be picking up a work of history off of my Russia shelf. This book is called From Splendor to Revolution by Julia P. Gallardi. This book is about four Romanov women, two who were born into the family and two who married into the family. It has also been quite some time since I got lost in a Russia book. So this will be quite the treat. And then the next two books I would like to pick up in January, I want to read these two either at the same time or around the same time. And you'll see why in a moment. So the first book is called 41 Love by Scarlett Thomas. This is a memoir. And the author, during a very difficult time in her life, decided to go back to playing tennis after years of not playing. And in this book, she talks about that experience. And then I would like to pair that book up with a fiction book called Apples Never Fall by Lee Ann Moriarty, which I have as an audiobook through Libro FM. Apples Never Fall is a thriller, and it's about 
about the dilemma that these four siblings face when their mother goes missing and their father becomes the number one suspect. And the reason why I'm pairing this up with 41 Love is that this family is heavily into tennis. So I don't think this is going to be the kind of classic fiction, nonfiction matchup that I normally recommend during Nonfiction November. I don't think either of these books is going to help the reading experience of the other. I more just wanted to read two books about tennis because my top nonfiction book of last year was a tennis book. I also would really like to read Mr. Flood's Last Resort by Jess Kidd this month. This book is about a curmudgeonly old man living in a gothic mansion and his very kind caretaker. Those two form an alliance against this man's very pushy son who is determined to put his father in an old age home. I read Things in Jars by Jess Kidd last year. I really loved it. As soon as I finished it, I knew I wanted to read all the rest of her novels. And this dark sounding one felt like just the ticket for January. Another author I would like to read more from is Meg Wallitzer. And while I've read all of her newer stuff, I have been very, very slowly working my way through her backlist. So for this first month of 2022, as I'm trying to read more books off of my shelves, I decided to pull one of her older books that I already owned off of my shelves and give that a read. And that book is called The Ten Year Nap. This book is about a group of four friends in New York City who all left their high-powered careers to stay at home and raise their kids. I absolutely love the way that Meg Wallitzer writes group dynamics. I also really like the way she shows how friendships and other relationships change over time. So I am really excited to read this. And then the rest of my reading month is probably going to be dominated by new releases. Of course, I'll be reading some books for my written reviews that I write for my various freelance venues. And I've decided that I'm not going to mention what those are in my TBR videos because so much can change between the time I get an assignment and that review is actually released. So all the books that I write about for my venues, I will only be talking about after the review already comes out. I'll talk about those in my wrap ups exclusively. But of course, I'll be reading new releases for other reasons as well for review here on this channel or just for myself. And there are two new releases in January that I am the most excited to read. The first one is called The Latinist by Mark Prinz, which is about the very dangerous relationship that develops between an Oxford PhD student and her mentor, and Lost and Found by Catherine Schulz, which is a memoir written by a woman who met her future wife and lost her father within the same brief span of time. I really want to get to both of these in January, but I can't say for certain that I'm going to because I neglected to get myself advanced copies of these two books. I'm kicking myself for that. So I'm very much hoping that the library gets these in and in a timely fashion so that I can read and review them. But one that I did get an advanced copy of is The Magnolia Palace by Fiona Davis, which is a work of historical fiction set at the Frick residence in New York City, and it is split between two different time periods. And because Helen Clay Frick, who is the daughter of Henry Clay Frick, has a very big role in this work of historical fiction, I also requested this next one from my library to read alongside this book. It is absolutely enormous, so I don't know how long I can hold this one up. It's called Helen Clay Frick, Bittersweet Heiress. And this book was written by Helen Clay Frick's great niece. Because this was written by a family member, I'm sure this will contain a rosier portrait of the woman than if it had been written by anybody else. But I'm okay with that. I'm aware of it going in. So I'll just keep an eye on that. But I'm very excited to learn more about her. Her father was a very big figure here in Pittsburgh, which is I'm sure why I had access to a resource like this. So those are the books that I'll be prioritizing in the month of January. All of the ones that I mentioned in today's video will be linked in the description box below for your clicking convenience. There very likely will be others that I pick up in January between all the written reviews that I do and any books that I pick up on a whim. So my wrap up may contain more books than just these, but these are definitely the ones that I want to do my absolute best to get to during the first month of 2022. I think it's going to be a really great reading month. Let me know in the comment section below if you've read any of these books or if you would like to. And also let me know if you're planning on joining in with 
the Midnight Library read-along. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you can join in. And if you would like to keep up with what I'm reading and writing about right now, you can find me on a variety of places around the internet, including Goodreads and Instagram, where I'm the most active. The links to everywhere you can find me will be at the bottom of the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.